Greetings, I hope you're all well. <laughs> and uh, just hope you're just abiding in the love and the grace and the goodness of God. Again, we're going to look at some good news today. You know, the gospel is good news. You know, I always tell you that. I want to emphasize it. It's not bad news. It's good news. And we all need that good news in our life. We all need to share that good news. You know, we're living, I believe we're really living in the end times. And um, maybe over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at some of that stuff. What, what is end times? What do we expect in these end times? But what we need to have is an urgency in our hearts to get the message of God's love and grace and the finished work of the cross out there to those who are lost, to those who are perishing, to those who are bound in sin. You know, we see that sins just abounding in increasing measures. Um, this last few weeks, I've just seen there's this kind of tendency starting to arise where things like pedophilia are coming to the fore and it's like real diverse and perverse immorality being a kind of accepted by society and let me just say that people are bound in sin they lost in sin and they go into hell because of sin but the good news is God's not sending anyone to hell I don't believe he sends people to hell I believe he gives the opportunity of them to be free from sin the power of sin and the power of death because you know Romans chapter 6 says the the, the wages of sin is death so the consequences of sin is death. It's the payment for sin is death. We need to be very clear on that. And as I'm going to share with you today, I'm going to share the good news of what happens to our sins. Because sometimes people say to me, well, what's happened to my sin? The good news is, is that through the cross, you can be set free from the power of sin. You can say no to sin and your sins are taken from you and put on Christ. We're going to look at that now. As I share, I want, I want to encourage you to look up the scriptures because, you know, our life, everybody out there is, is making up their own truths. You know, I used to come, I used to be in the new age and in the new age, you, you mix and match your own religion. You make up your own truths, whatever feels good for you, whatever works for you, whatever feels good for you, go and do it, enjoy it. In fact, that's a satanic, that's a satanic doctrine doesn't matter what, what consequences are, you just do what makes you feel good. <laughs> well, good luck with that because <laughs> we've seen that the wages of sins truly are death. And you see people, for a while they're living in this debauched, hedonistic, self-centered lifestyle. And their life just starts falling to pieces. You know, and as somebody who's been in the Lord 30, 30 years, almost 30 years now, I've just seen so many people turning, turning away from the good news of the gospel turning away from salvation offered them and living a self-centered life and it's just they just fall in to sin in increasing measure sin propagates sin that's why you see people get into the most perverse and weird stuff because they are slaved and slaved by sin it says we and romans 6 14 says for we are not under the power or the dominion or under slavery to sin but we are under grace and Titus 2 12 says for it's grace that enables us to say no to the lust of the world so we can be free from sin but what I want to share today is I want to share with you the good news of the cross the good news of Jesus the good news of what Jesus came to do and it all has to do with our sin and it's great news because Man, you know, when we carry out the guilt and the shame of sin, it can weigh us down, make us depressed, be heavy. And some Christians, despite being Christian, they carry the weight of sin. They, they, they don't understand the exchange of the cross. And the key scripture today is going to be 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It says, for he who knew no sin, he that was without sin, and that's Jesus, became sin so that we should become the righteousness of God in Christ. That's like weird, man, <laughs> that Jesus became sin. And uh, um, it, it says in the book of Peter, it's, I think it's Peter 1, or chapter, Peter 1, Peter chapter 2, I think, it says that he, Jesus, bore our sins in his body on the cross. You see, there was this exchange in the cross. The cross is about this exchange, our sin, for his righteousness, his right standing with God. 
And that and that's good news because you might be if maybe if you're not a Christian and you and you knowing that you're living a lifestyle that is harmful, that you've hurt others, that you've done some horrible things and you're carrying the guilt of it. The good news today is that Jesus wants to take that sin from you. In fact, he took it from you 2000 years ago. You just got to enter into that and know it by being born again in the spirit of God. So if, if, you, if you've never given your life to Jesus, again, I want to say to you today, as I give everybody an opportunity every time I preach, because the time is short, Jesus can come back at any time. And those who are not in Christ are lost. Eternal separation because of sin, because sin separates us from a holy God. If it's not covered by the blood of Jesus, if it's not covered. So you, you might not even understand what I'm saying if you're, if you're not saved. But today you can get saved. Today you can repent. You can change your mind about, about what's good and what's evil. You can turn away from sin. And you can pray a prayer and just say, Jesus, I don't, maybe I don't understand who you are. But I ask you into my life now. I turn away from my old life, my old way of doing things. And I ask you to fill me with your spirit that I can walk in your ways, walk in your truth and know your love and your goodness and your grace. If that's you, if you need more information on that kind of prayer, what it means, contact me. But I can tell you now, every single person who listens, God loves you. God does not want you to die in your sin. He wants to know, he wants you to know that Jesus Jesus was the one who took our sins. And John the Baptist, he said, to, he said when he saw Jesus come in, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So that's 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And again, when we preach, when we teach, we need to preach and teach from the Bible. You don't need to hear my good ideals. You need to hear what the scriptures say and how they are applied into everyday life. That is good news <laughs> because you know what? It's not about a whole lot of man-made philosophy or intellectual wisdom. It's the word of God, the Bible that was written over the last 4,000 years. That men and women have lived by for generation upon generation and seen liberty and freedom. It's in the Bible. These things are true unto us today. <laughs> it's good news. It's exciting news, the power of the Word of God. The Word of God is powerful, effective, and true. And if you get that into your life, if you found your life on the teachings of Jesus Christ, He said you're, you're going to have a house built like on a rock. And the teachings of the Holy Spirit were all Holy Spirit inspired through the apostles and the prophets. And they teach us about the ways of God. And what God says, God says your sins need to be washed away. Because everybody, Romans chapter 3 says, everybody has sinned. Every single person sinned. We, we inherited that propensity from our forefathers to sin. To do evil in the eyes of a holy God. And the bar of holiness is so high. You know, if it was, if it was six foot high, the bar of holiness, you could, you could maybe with great effort jump over it. But let me tell you, the bar of God's holiness 20 stories high. You can never get there through your self-effort. You can only be lifted into that holiness through accepting Jesus Christ as an atonement or a payment for your sins. I did that when I was 35 years of age. <laughs> I was bound in all sorts of sins and addictions and fears and depressions. But one day God's love drew me and I gave my life to him and the power of sin got broken. And now I am no longer a slave to sin. I can say no to sin because that is the power of the Holy Spirit living, living in me. He lives in me. He lives in you if you're born again. So the sin that we carried our life past, present and future. That's, that sounds amazing. Past, present and future sin was taken by Jesus on the cross. So we often read John 3.16 when we're evangelists. And again, we need to all be evangelizing. You may not be an evangelist, but we can all testify to God's grace and goodness to our friends and neighbors and those around us because the time is short. 
and people who are unsaved are going to end their time in eternal separation from God. And nobody, the great divorce, as C.S. Lewis talks about, the great divorce, eternal separation from a loving, kind, and beautiful God. And God would have that no one perish, that everybody turns to Him. And that's why He's holding back. People say, well, why does God allow all this stuff on the earth? Why doesn't He come? He, and it says, because He's waiting for people to be saved. He's waiting for us, the church, to get out there and share the good news. <laughs> Whoa! Come on, guys, let's let's share the good news. You, we can do it. It's not about us doing it in our strength. It's about us speaking under the power and the unction of the Holy Spirit, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And we can tell people Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He was punished for your sins. See, the wages of sin is death. Romans 8, chapter 1 says, for now there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life sets me free from the law of sin and death. See, there's a law. There's a, a spiritual law. You sin. You reap the consequences, which is death. There's sickness, which is like mini death. You know, mini me kind of thing. Mini death. Death comes about through sickness most of the time. So good news is we don't have to experience death. In fact, it says if you're a Christian, you don't die, you fall asleep in the Lord. Big difference. Those who die go down to the place of death, to Hades, to Sheol, the place where the dead are contained in their death and separation from God, to hell, to an eternal separation. Nobody has to go to that place. <laughs> That's a horrible thought. That's why we need to get out there and share the good news. So just as... John 3.16, God so loved the world. But just before that, in John, uh, John 3.15, it says that just like the snake was lifted up on the pole in the desert, so the Son of God, Jesus, must be lifted up. And if you look at that, it goes back, again, Jesus fulfilled the law and the Old Testament law and prophets. And it goes back to Numbers 21. Where, where the people in the desert were complaining against God. They were basically sinning because they were in rebellion against God. And they were bitten by snakes, which is a symbol of the poison of sin. And they were dying. And actually Moses took a, 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 made a snake and put it up on a pole. And it said, all who looks at that snake, who fixes their eyes on that snake, were healed. And actually it was a prophetic sign because the old covenant is in shadows and types of the new to come. That was a prophetic sign of Jesus becoming sin for us. He became like a snake on the pole, on the pole, which is the cross. He became sin. He became like the serpent. He became like the, he, he, he became poisonous sin. And it's a reason Jesus died was not because he got stabbed in the side, not because they put nails in his hands, but because all his sin and the curse of sin was upon him and the wages of sin, his death. And just before he died, Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, sin becomes separation from a holy God. Now, again, there's a lot of controversy over those words. But what I do know is sin separates. Sin kills. And Jesus was stone dead. Jesus was dead because of sin. The wages of our sin upon him, born on, the, on his body on the cross, was death. And he was put in a grave, dead and gone. But the wonderful news, <laughs> the wonderful news for us all, the power of the Holy Spirit came upon him, came in him and raised Jesus from that dead. And the same power of the Holy Spirit is at work in you and in me, my friends. That is joyful news. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead is at work in us. And sin and death could not hold him. He rose from the grave. And I want to tell you, when he rose from the grave, the gates of hell and death shook and tumbled down. 
the scheme of the devil was broken and we humankind were liberated from the power of sin and death we now have that choice god is a god of love and he gives us free choice and he says if you want to be free if you want to have a place in eternity with me in the new heaven and new earth where there's no more death no more sin no more weeping it's my gift to you grace through jesus christ but you got to believe for all who believe john chapter one for all who believe in him have a right to become children of god with an eternal inherit inheritance in christ so i want to make it clear today that your sin past present and future when you come into christ was born in jesus's body on the cross and it stays there god actually when he sees you sees you perfected like jesus he sees you actually it says your life is now hidden in Christ. When he sees you, he sees the holiness and the righteousness, which means right standing of Christ. You are justified just as if you never sinned. So stop focusing on your sin. If you're battling with sin, get some help. It's not to say that we never sin, but the difference is now we don't do it willingly. It's not in our heart. It's not our nature. And it's certainly not our objective. Our objective is to please God and, and, and love people and share the good news. To live in love and kindness and goodness and the peace of the Holy Spirit. Wow, we are an amazing people. You are amazing. You are amazing. And God's got amazing plans for your life. We are instruments of His freedom and healing and deliverance. Your sin, it says that God not only forgives your sins, but he has forgotten your sins and they are no longer accounted to you. When the books of the book of, of life is opened at the end days, your sin page is going to be blank. Now, some people will say, well, it sounds like you're, you're um, preaching a license to sin. I am not doing that. Sin is evil. Sin is bad. I am saying in the cross, our sins are forgiven and we have the power to say no to sin. Start believing what the word of God says. I am not pre pre preaching immorality. I am not preaching debauchery. I'm preaching holiness through the blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, so sin increased because we are under grace. God forbid, as Paul said, know that now we are free people. Know that we are now a holy people, a righteous people, perfected in Christ. My friends, let's get the good news out there. Times may be short. Jesus may be coming soon. I don't know, like nobody knows the exact time, but look at the world. It's in such a mess. But let's face it, it's been in a mess many, many times before. But we don't know. What we do know is people are perishing unless they get the good news. Let's get out there and share it. If you like these videos, again, I encourage you, hit the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner the red button and then there's a little bell that comes up as well hit that then you'll get notifications whenever i share i'm sharing to encourage you i'm sharing to remind you of your identity as a child of god called to reign now upon the earth <laughs> reign now over evil reign now over sin reign now over injustice advance the kingdom of god that's going to come in its fullness one day when Jesus appears in the clouds with glory. And I can't wait. Bless you.